by the left or right hepatic duct, which unite to form the common hepatic duct. The common hepatic duct and the cystic duct unite to form the common bile duct. And secretions from the pancreas will drain via the pancreatic duct to meet the common bile duct at the hepatopancreatic ampulla. All these secretions can then flow into the duodenum for their function, more specifically in the second part of the duodenum. These secretions are controlled by the sphincter of body, which is a muscular sphincter surrounding the hepatopancreatic ampulla. So that's a quick presentation on the anatomy of the biliary tree. So, hi, my name is Aaron Rollins, and I'm a final year medical student at University of Exeter, and also the SLS community manager. So today on SLS with Eamon, we'll be talking about the Meds Academy Fellowship Program. Uh, we have our illustrious guest, Yusuf, who is the Meds Academy e Fellowship Program lead, and he'll be taking us through what will happen, and he'll be asking me a few questions, I'll be asking him a few questions. Um, Yusuf, do you want to introduce, introduce yourself and just take everything away? Yeah. So hi, hi everyone. My name is uh, Yusuf. I'm an F2 based down in Worthing currently. Um, graduated from medicine at Barts in 2019. Uh, I've been at Medicine Academy for a while now, but I'm currently in the role of the clinical lead for the fellowship program. So I want to talk a little bit uh, about this with you guys because I think it's a really good opportunity for medical students. Great. So I'm actually going to ask Eamon some questions to start off with because obviously Eamon's a Medics Academy fellow. And uh, so the first thing I wanted to ask you, Eamon, was how did you find out about the fellowship program? Well, that's a really good question, Yusuf. Um, I think unusually, like, like compared to everyone else, maybe, I'm not sure how it was for everyone. Uh, I found out about it basically through your hand. I, never, I actually didn't know much about it at all. And then your, I was doing a project regarding like teaching that was kind of similar to s docs and your was like do you want to start on the fellows program and that's basically how i found out about it yeah i mean i think that's really important because yeah we, we're very keen to have people that are driven um which is one of the reasons you'll probably find out about it in such a way and um, what motivated you to to join um having seen the program in its structure um what motivated me to join i I think the main purpose for me was I was running an education program um, that mainly involved like peer peer led learning, um, and I kind of wanted to find a way to in like show my education resources to a larger, a wider audience, and the fellowship program seemed like a really amazing way in order to do that. Basically, so that's kind yeah. of implored me to join. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we're really happy to have you because, you know, you've been doing amazing work so far. Um, since joining the programme, uh, what kind of projects have you been undertaking? So since joining the programme, I basically started off as um, being in charge of webinars and like recordings. So I started basically speaking to various teachers on the virtual ed programme as well, outside the virtual ed programme to give teaching sessions record them and basically download them on our YouTube channel. And I would then go about editing those um, videos as well as adding descriptions and then advertising them on the SDOS program. In addition to that, I've now started the SDOS with Eamon um, episodes, which uh, incorporate those videos along with other videos from the other virtual elective events. And those basically go live on the Men's Academy Twitter, Facebook, um, as well as go sometimes on a Slack channel, just to kind of inform students. And I believe they kind of have a bit of, bigger traction just because they're, they're live in there. I think a bit more interesting, especially with like the intros, outros, et cetera. Um, yeah, so I think those are kind of my main roles. Um, my other roles kind of involve now getting involved in market research just to see how the SDOS is doing, what kind of things um, the participants really want, and just making different various projects uh, throughout the year, like making a newsletter, and I guess just find out, finding different innovative ways to bring more people to the channel. So I think that's kind of my main roles for SDOS at the moment. 
Yeah, I mean, that's really awesome. It sounds like, you know, you've been, you've been undertaking lots of different kind of projects um, and piecing together various kind of skills that you may be able to kind of gain. What skills would you say you've gained having gone through the programme so far to the point which you're at? Well, I think at the moment, I feel like this, this quite a few, honestly, I never, I've never edited a video in my life. Um, so actually when, when I was asked to edit videos, I'm just kind of like, I'm not sure how to do this, but I like, I think I've gotten the hang of it quite a bit now. Um, and so I would say video editing is definitely one of the things that I've gained from it. I think one of the more important things that I've gained is from just working with Anna and Adriana and just like they're such a great team and also like having Johan as my mentor um, at the beginning and also working with Hiba and everyone else and uh, basically like just the just the teamwork skills that I've learned from just working with so many different people um, especially like the SDOS team has just been I think quite invaluable I'd say so I think that is one of the most important skills but another skill that I'd say I've learned is definitely like what you has kind of taught is to basically make strategic decisions where you kind of basically undertake activities that will have as much or more of an impact as the amount of work you put into them so there's no wasted energy into the particular project that you're working on and there's and it actually manages to serve a purpose so I think that would be one of the most valuable um, skills that I've learned. Yeah, I mean, that's really good to hear that, you know, you're actually gaining and developing these skills that we feel are very core, um, not just in medical education and development, but kind of core skills that you'll take throughout your clinical career. Um, would you say that you've enjoyed the programme so far? Yes, I think so. I mean, like, I feel, very supported and um i've spoke i've kind of been in continuous contact with yusuf and my current mentor abby has always been uh very supportive and she's always kind of asking like if there's anything else that they can do to help how everything is going so far and she gave me like literally like yesterday she gave me really good advice on kind of how to improve the sls with Eamon um episodes and i definitely will take that on board for future episodes and actually use those various activities she recommended to improve um, the project going along. Great. And is there anything specifically that you'd say that has made the fellowship program quite enjoyable? That's a really good question. Um, I would say, I guess just working with so many different people and so many different personalities. I mean, I have always quite enjoyed working with a lot of people and really Mets Academy, between Mets Academy and HLA have just given me the opportunity to like work with so many different like amazing people that I probably would have never spoken to before. So I'd say that would probably be the most enjoyable thing for me. Um, but yeah. like obviously the skills that I've learned have, that would definitely like come under the enjoyable section of the program. <laughs> well, I mean, it's good to hear that, you know, you, you, you've been deriving some sort of pleasure from the kind of things that you're doing and interacting with, you know, our wide faculty uh, that, that we have in the fellowship program and throughout Medics Academy. Um, have you, uh, how, how much time would you say you spend a week um, uh, undertaking a project for Medics Academy? I would say bet probably between two to four hours, I think. Um, I think that would be just a general like average maybe yeah. some, some sometimes you just have more things to do regarding like the different the project or you have you have like another um activity to undertake to kind of go towards like the aims of the actual like fellowship so it really does depend but i would say probably about two to four hours a day okay okay um and have you had any opportunities to present your work at any kind of international conferences or national conferences or trying to write up any papers? So at the moment, I have done the, um, the local Medics Academy um, all-hands team meeting. 
which I just presented um, what I've done so far for the SDOS program. And then I also did a oral present a presentation for the FDOCS National Conference um, a couple of months awesome. ago. Awesome. So that, that was quite interesting. But I mean, awesome. obviously, just with, with so many conferences being cancelled or not happening at all, it's, it's a bit difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to, to get an oral presentation, you know, while you're in medical school is a really big achievement. Um, and it's really good to hear that you've had that. I think I also remember you did a, you, we did a showcase of kind of, uh, uh, work to, to the wider community, the wider medical academy community, which I remember you did as well, but you may have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, you and Jade, I think, did a little piece at the end on um, F docs and S docs and what you guys are doing together, which is really good. But yeah, I mean, to get an oral presentation at the you know while you're in medical school, you know, it's a really big achievement, um, and you know, hopefully, you're about to get some more. Yeah. Um, Lastly, uh, the last question I want to ask you is, would you recommend applying for the fellowship programme? Yeah, I think I would definitely uh, recommend applying for the fellowship programme. I mean, I would say that it was, it's definitely a very interesting experience. And like, you def I think Yusuf and everyone manages to tailor what you get out of it and what you want to get out of it quite well. So you're not going to be spending time doing something that you like, you hate or anything like that. You're, that, you're going to be spending time doing something that you're actually interested in. So I definitely recommend. Okay, great. Well, at this point, myself and Eamon are going to flip the script here. And uh, Eamon's going to be asking me some questions about the fellowship program for, for yourselves at home to, uh, to, to try to get a bit more of an understanding towards. So Eamon, you can take it away. <laughs> Okay, we will do you so. So I have, or oh, I don't have as many questions. I just have a few, so this won't be that long. But how does the fellowship program work? You so? so the fellowship program is essentially a eighteen-month structured program um, for medical students and junior doctors. Um, and within those eighteen months, we structure into three different categories. So we have a three-month phase, which is kind of your initial phase. Uh, you then have a six month phase, uh, which is the middle level phase, and then you have a nine month phase. Um, in those first three months, we work with you very closely. So you'll have one to, uh, so you'll have a meeting with your supervisor every single week. Uh, and they're kind of geared towards making sure that you're uh, gaining some of the skills that you'll be working on. Um, and you'll also be able to kind of experience um, quite quite close mentorship as kind of Eamon described uh, when, when he was being mentored by Johan initially. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll work closely with our mentors in that first three months. And that's really to determine whether or not you actually like the fellowship program and if it's for you as well. Because it, as I mentioned, it's, you know, it's up to four to six hours of uh, extra work every week, which is a commitment that one has to make. Um, so that, that's your first three months and we do this by facilitating somebody doing a project. So, you know, in Eamon's uh, example, he's been doing some of this work with S-Docs and we've, we have kind of ample number of different projects that we've kind of pursued and we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, then we have our six month phase. In this phase, uh, we take our hands off a little bit and let the fellow kind of develop the skills that they've learned in that first phase a little bit further. Um, you know, you'll still be closely mentored but instead of having weekly meetings you'll probably have meetings every two weeks or so um, and again this is to allow your guys creativity to really shine through um, sometimes you'll be working in teams in this phase as well so you might be working with another uh, person so for example I think Eamon is working with Jade uh, on some of the community building aspects of SDOCs and FDOCs together um, and then Jade's another one of our fellows um, and then our last phase is a nine month phase. So here you're a lot more independent. Um, you know, we more or less take, that, take our hands off you and let you guys be really creative. Um, you kind of have monthly meetings um, and you know, you'll probably, the chances are you'll be working in a team at this point, um, you know, working with th maybe two, three, four, even other people um, looking to deliver some sort of learning program. So that's kind of how the 18 months kind of patterns on you. Like I said, you'd be on different projects in each of the different phases. Um, alongside this, uh, there is the opportunity to pursue a um, postgraduate certificate, uh, certification with a medical education, um, 
whereby some of the, the practical stuff that you're doing in your projects, you may be able to take them out and apply them to some of the modules that, um, you know, work uh, for, for that PG cert. Um, you know, this is something that we kind of tailor to the individual as they're going through the fellowship program. Um, so yeah, that's essentially how the fellowship program works in its structure. Um, alongside that, you know, we, we, we do, you kind of have those regular mentorship sessions and we do aim to provide uh, monthly workshops um, as well as other opportunities for fellows to really get involved because as I'm sure you could imagine, Medics Academy is a, uh, a pretty big organisation with all kinds of stuff going on all the time. So, um, you know, there will always be opportunities for yourself uh, to, to, you know, get stuck in and develop a new skill or do something completely different uh, alongside that. Yeah. Oh, so what happens after the nine months then? So after the nine months, um, you would have completed your fellowship uh, program. Um, you'll, you know, get, gain a certificate for that and, uh, you know, say that, you know, you've, you've successfully completed that program. Um, in the longer term, you know, we, we hope that our fellows, and one of the key kind of distinctions for fellows actually are, we aim to kind of foster this really long-term relationship with them so it's the reason we you know we we have quite a lengthy process with them trying to build up their skills because we want them to be involved with the company uh in the longer term um so you know th th this may mean that you know at the at the end of the 18 month period um you know if there are any roles available um or if there are any uh, opportunities to get further involved with Medics Academy, you know, we would do an evaluation and things like that to, to determine uh, the outcome. Um, and see if there are any other roles basically that you may be able to fulfill. Okay, and basically, so it's a nine months and then six months and then three months, is that right? Three months, six months, nine months. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Would you say, how difficult would you say it is to complete um, the Medics Academy Fellowship? Um, so they've had varying um, degrees of um, success with fellows. I think we've restructured the program quite recently. Um, and since this restructuring, we've had a much higher retention rate. Um, and I think, you know, if if a fellow is willing to put the time in, um, you know, there's no reason they, they can't complete the program. As as mentioned, you know, it's only it's only you know between kind of three to six hours extra, or four to six hours um, of extra work a week, which realistically is um, kind of two evenings or um, you know a day on a weekend, like half of a day on a weekend, which is actually not a huge time commitment but kind of what you realize is, is that you know doing that regularly actually really helps you build up to create a really good project at the end of it yeah perfect and how does it want another question how did you get involved um as the medic academy fellowship lead um so well i guess so i i became a fellow at medics academy back when the fellowship program started in 2018 i think also it's a long time ago now i'm really showing my age um, <laughs> uh, so this is at the end of my fourth year as a medical student so i spent uh the summer working at medics academy um on a clinical genetics course uh really enjoyed the fellowship program uh, and so as we kind of carried on working you know, and just asked me if i would like to take up this role and i thought that's something i'm actually really interested in uh, i've got quite keen interest in making sure we can develop um, students and doctors to be the best versions of themselves, um, which is, you know, I, I take quite a big interest in that. So, yeah. And how many um, fellows have, have come under you since you've taken out that role? Um, under me personally, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't say, but I'd say um, throughout the whole fellowship program, we've had around 40 fellows either enrolled or have come through completely um, throughout the program, um, yeah. And as a former fellow yourself, would you recommend being a fellow? Yeah, I definitely recommend it. I think, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes it can be hard work. And, um, but what I, I'd say one thing you realize is that 
you, you need to develop the skills to be able to manage time effectively. Um, I think that's one skill that I has been invaluable since uh, joining as a fellow. Um, and be able to manage studying alongside doing um, other tasks. What, what you come to realize is once, and I can say this as the junior doctor, you know, you, you never have enough time to do stuff. So being able to actually figure out how you prioritize your time uh, to actually pursue things that you're passionate about um, is actually a really, you know, really valuable skill to develop, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much, Yusuf. Um, so how do you apply for the program? Um, so you apply, we have an application portal um and with that there are um two uh we will put we can post the link with this video i guess um and with that you'll realize you'll see that there are actually two tracks within the fellow program one of them is a uh technology and education track which is um kind of focusing on some of our products and um and there's another track which is a management track which you're kind of looking at program management um, so you either apply for one of the two uh, tracks and you essentially just write a personal statement um, and send in your CV alongside this personal statement I think should be 500 words um, and after that uh, we review the applications uh, and then interview the candidates um, so the most current um, application window will close on December the 7th um, and you know soon after that we'll be doing interviews uh, with the aim to start uh, towards the middle of january however you know we are flexible of, uh, alongside people's start times because we do appreciate students have exams all kinds of time whenever the medical school start, decides to throw them at you um and you know there's no uniformity across um across all the medical schools about what exactly when exams are and stuff so yeah we, we try to be as accommodating as possible Okay, and so what is the difference between the technology and education track and the program management track? I know you gave kind of a summary, but can you give me a little bit more information on that? Yeah, so, um, so the technology and education track, so really the difference is going to be in the projects that you pursue and the teams that you work with. So um, the projects, I'd say, are um, when it comes to the, the technology enhanced uh learning track you know you you will be producing um projects that are related to uh so you'll be working on projects that uh, change our overall kind of product structure so for example one of our um fellows has gone on to begin the work in animating a um vr lumber puncture course which is really interesting really cool stuff um, and that's kind of use of technology to, to, to push forward education. Um, another one of our fellows is um, do, um, doing some work related to, uh, well, a few of our fellows actually recently had a course published on negotiations um, on the Medics Academy platform as part of one of the, I think, one of the HLA resources as well. Um, so that's really interesting and you know they had to utilize things such as animating software and kind of really interesting stuff um, and that that's subtly different from the programs um, track whereby you know you're looking at an overall program and determining how do you actually deliver a program for manic uh, for medics academy um, you'll be working more closely with the programs team rather than the tech and the product team and the education stuff underneath it so you know you'll probably gain some more skills pertaining to marketing um, and program management which is you know in its own right a different set of skills okay and my last question was to do with the project so you, you basically answered that really well but just um for any everyone watching how do you go about um choosing the projects for each specific fellow what's like the process so we, we have our own um, kind of projects that we're working on, depending on what's kind of important at the time. I think, um, so basically all the different product managers at Medics Academy, we ask them to come up with projects that they think a fellow would be interested in. Um, and then we have a process of reviewing the projects, putting together learning objectives, 
um, looking at how we map them out to the PG cert if a fellow uh, if if they have the potential to be not, not all projects can be mapped out to the PG cert just by the definition of the way the project works but you know if, if we can map it out we we see how we would go about mapping it out to the to a uh, to a postgraduate qualification. And the other thing um, that you know you can uh, that we do is we, we essentially kind of assign our projects into different um, what's the word? Um, you, you kind of have different attributes which each project will and different skills which you can learn from each project. So one will be say marketing, one will be um, say um, uh, content creation. Another one will be, say, uh, uh, working with research and things like that. Um, so, you know, after that, we, when we kind of interview fellows, we try to see, take down their interests um, and see, you know, what what is going to suit them and what, you know, what, what they're going to enjoy um, doing. And, uh, you know, as we say, we, we, we maintain a close relationship with fellows and that's really important to us. So we hope to realise if a project, if a fellow isn't enjoying their project at present, you know, um, we see if we can transition them onto a different project. Um, but, you know, it's all dependent on availability at the time. Um, but, yeah, my, we, we haven't had particularly... Uh, any, any real dissatisfaction with projects thus far, which I think is a, a you know, it tells us that we're doing something right with our formula, but I'm sure, you know, uh, the second something goes wrong, uh, I'm sure people will let me know, because I think we, we try to be as approachable as possible when it comes to those kind of things. Awesome, thanks so much, Yusuf. Um, those are all the questions I have for you. Do you have anything that you'd like to add before we end off? Um, I think, uh, the only thing I'd just like to add is, you know, uh, it's a really good opportunity. And if you're if you're passionate about education, uh, medical education, technology enhanced learning, uh, if you want to learn and get involved with a fast growing startup, uh, you know, take the opportunity, put in an application. Um, you know, you absolutely, you know, what what have you got to lose really by putting in an application? So you've heard it here first, guys. Like, I definitely recommend it. Yusuf definitely recommends it. So. Yeah, it's definitely time to start putting those applications. And remember to join the SDOT Facebook group to learn about more CV opportunities like these. Uh, also join the SDOT Slack. We are doing some case discussions, um, some clinical skills sessions. So really amazing stuff going on there. And also join the Best Academy YouTube channel. So thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks for joining us today, Yusuf. Glomerulopathy or glomerular dysfunction can present clinically with nephrotic syndrome, which includes proteinuria, hyperalbuminemia, and edema, or it could present as nephritic syndrome with proteinuria, hematuria, hypertension, and a risk of an acute kidney injury. The diseases that cause glomerulopathies can present as a purely nephrotic picture, as a purely nephritic picture, or some diseases can present with a mixed picture and include uh, features of both presentations. Purely nephrotic diseases include minimal change disease and membranous glomerular nephritis, both of which start with the letter M. And some purely nephritic diseases include the anchor positive diseases, anti glomerular basement membrane disease, IgA nephropathy, and another one is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis, which will bring back an ASOP positive test or anti streptolysin O test. So all of them have the letter A involved. Diseases that cause the mixed picture include focal segmental glomerular nephritis nodular nephropathies, which include amyloidosis and diabetes, and membranoproliferative proliferative glomerular nephritis, which classically is right in the center of both syndromes and includes all features of both syndromes. And finally, don't forget lupus, which can present as any type of glomerulopathy, so as purely nephrotic, purely nephritic, or as a mixed picture as well. So that concludes a quick presentation